We're going to start in now with reinforcement learning. This is a technology that was used a lot a few years ago to defeat games like Go and chess. Now they're, the, these games are completely dominated by computers as absolutely the top playing entities in the world. Reinforcement learning is also used for entities like self-driving cars and others where you have a lot of training data available. We'll take a look, first of all, at Gymnasium. This used to be called the OpenAI Gym, and OpenAI has moved a lot more towards generative AI. They don't seem as interested in reinforcement learning anymore. So Gymnasium is the, is the one that they offloaded it onto. And we're going to look at this, this technology. Gymnasium basically allows you to use the games, the kind of interactive video sessions that you typically train this on. We'll see that we can train this on Atari games and other, other sorts of, of games. So when dealing with open, with the gymnasium environments and really anything related to reinforcement learning, you have a number of things that you deal with. There's the action space. These are the things that you can do. Often, these are discrete values, like move a joystick up or down, left or right. But there is possibility also to use continuous value. Maybe how far you wish to push the accelerator down on a, on a car. Then there's the observation space. This could be an image of what the car or the game currently looks like. In the case of some of the Atari games, it's the actual memory of the, like, RAM of the computer game. Really, anything that provides information on the overall state of the game that the reinforcement learning is learning. The agent, that's the player inside of it that is moving up, down, left, right, going about its, its business. An episode is that's a collection of steps, like one, one play of the game or some, some sequence of time. The renderer uh, is what's going to draw what it actually looks like. We can convert these into full videos if, if we like to. The reward is some sort of positive reinforcement, letting the agent know that it's doing particularly well. And for some of these, they are non-deterministic, so there will be a random element in terms of what's going to happen. Some of these games, for example, uh, it, there are random elements in there, and the agent needs to learn to be able to deal with this randomness. Now, to install Gymnasium, we'll run this. I am going to go ahead and jump into Colab so that I can actually run these. You'll run this cell first to just make sure that everything is installed that you need, mostly installing Gymnasium. Also with the Atari ROMs, the ROMs are the cartridges that were in these Atari games. So we accept the license and we also install Atari. Right, that is completely installed. So let's create a little function here that will query an environment. I'm going to use this multiple times, and it's going to tell me the action space, the observation space, uh, and just kind of some general information on an environment. We can run it for the mountain car environment, and we will see that this is an environment that we're going to make, make use of. So the observation space is basically a, a box that gives you several uh, vectors here, and the uh, Maximum episode length is 200 frames, so it doesn't give you too much time to achieve the mountain car, and we'll see what that means in a, a moment. It is not non, this is like a double negation, so it's, it's predictable. And then the reward range is infinite values, and the reward threshold is a negative 110. We'll also look at carpool. This is just yet another one. It's where you're trying to balance a pole on a moving, a moving car. And you can see, like for carpool, we have the car position, the velocity, the angle, and the velocity at the, at the tip. So as it's moving back and forth, trying to not have that pole fall over. So this is all that it sees. It doesn't see an actual image of the, of the pole. It just knows these four values. That's what it's trying to predict on. Uh, predict an action that it can go. And the action is just to push to the left or the right. You can't actually come to a stop. And then the mountain car continuous, you can use a continuous version of the mountain car 
And in this case, you are allowed to apply a continuous sort of throttle. You can use the ale ones. This is uh, this is Atari, so you can look at breakout version five, and you can see that the observation space, it's a grid, so 210 by 160, that's the very, very low resolution of the Atari game system, and then three RGB values. Atari only had like 15 colors, I believe, so it's just mapping it to RGB space. You can also look at the RAM. The RAM for these is not very big, 128 bytes. That's if you just wanted to use the internal RAM state of the, of the memory to use that to train the game. Some of them do quite well using that. Now we're going to run this in Colab. So we can't actually watch things run in real time on Colab. We can't watch games run, but we can render them to a video file. And then we will look at the video file. So this requires us to install Pi Virtual Display and also a couple of video related packages. So we'll go ahead and install these. All right. And sometimes this one doesn't install with the others. So I put it separately. It seems to be OK. So what we're going to do here is run Atlantis. I used to rather like this this game. I was very, very young when Atari came out, but this was kind of a fun, a fun game. Ships come by and try to blow up your underwater city here. So we're going to go ahead and run it. What's going on here is we're creating our virtual display. It's going to be whatever resolution you want, higher or lower. Remember, the Atari games themselves are quite low resolution. We get the environment. We set the render frames at, again, whatever we want and we wrap the environment, which is done here with the record video. We call reset just to bring the environment back to the very, very beginning. It's like pushing the reset button on those old video game systems. And then we're going to run the environment until it's done. You get the terminated and truncated. Those are the two that tell you if it's finished or not. Older versions used to be just done, but this is, this is a recent, very breaking change that they, that they made. So if it's terminated or truncated, then stop. Then we basically look for the MP4 file that we just wrote and we, we display it. And then you can watch it play Atlantis. You'll see a little spaceship fly by and you are these guns down here shooting and the computer's in control of these. It's, it's doing it really just somewhat randomly just firing the guns, and then you, you score points, and, and you go from there. So this is, this is Atlantis the game. And if you look at the code, you'll see that we're getting back a number of values here. Observation, reward, terminated, truncated, and info. These become very important in the coming videos. Observation, this is basically the, the screen. Reward is if you got a reward or not. Usually you get that when you win or when you shoot something. Terminated returns uh, if it's reached the terminal state. And then truncated is a way, truncated is a way, like if you lose all your lives or something, to terminate it pre prematurely. And info, I haven't seen many return info, but this is apparently some way to get some additional telemetry on, on the game. Thank you for watching the video and please click like if you if this was useful to you and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos for this class.